New York, New York, baby. I'm not only making this video just because I had the Rangers beating the Penguins in seven, I believe, in my Stanley Cup bracket, but because the New York Rangers and their Cinderella run, my goodness, has it actually been sustained? Game six here in Pittsburgh, a team that was initially down 3-1 in the series, ends up winning game five via a huge comeback. Guess what? They do the exact same thing here tonight. And even though the score was 5-3. At the end of the day, Igor goes out there and he holds the line. He makes a few really nice passes and some very clutch saves as well. This was a really tight game for a 5-3 score. And as we said, this was yet another one of these Pittsburgh games where they had the lead. It was 2-0 Pittsburgh earlier on in the first period. New York really not getting off to a good start. Two goals in about a minute and a bit. And everybody was talking about, oh, the Rangers, their defense sucks. What the hell is going on over here? They're not clamping it down. Sure, Igor needs to make those saves, but come on, Igor can't make those saves. Look at the chances they got. One of them was a scramble right in front. The Rangers can't clear the other one. The Rangers try to clear. It goes right onto the stick of the Penguins guy, which leads to a perfect pinpoint accurate cross crease unguarded. That's not Igor's fault. And you could go out there and say that Igor didn't really have a goal that he let in that was his fault, quote-unquote. The other goal was a breakaway by Evgeny Malkin, and I mean, okay, if you're a goalie and you're facing Evgeny Malkin on a breakaway, what are the odds you save that puck? Not very high, if I do say so myself. But either way, Igor Shashurkin and the Rangers had themselves a very... Very emotionally compelling game, especially from my own standpoint. Of course, I'm not really the biggest Rangers fan in the world. I talk about the Rangers quite a bit on the channel because I know we have some New York fans who tune in, so I appreciate you all very much. But it wasn't even just because of my bracket that I was like, yeah, you know, I want the Rangers to come back and win. It was like... All the storylines, the fact that New York was a team that a lot of people would say didn't even really deserve to be here had it not been for their goaltending, the fact that this is a younger team compared to Pittsburgh and their experience, the veteran presence, sure, they missed out on Ricard Raquel today, sure, they missed out on Sidney Crosby today, and for sure, those two guys would have played a huge impact, plus Casey DeSmith had he actually been healthy, same with Jari, Domingue is still in net after all, but this was a game where the New York Rangers decided in their fate, okay, look, we're not going to go down that easy. It was only 16 minutes of game time, and now we're down 2 nothing. We need to get things going. We need to make sure we capitalize on our chances, and we just got to wait till Pittsburgh makes that mistake before we come out and strike while the iron is hot. That's what happened in the second period. I believe it was Lindgren who took down Evan Rodriguez in the corner, and after Rodriguez went down, Okay, no call. I could see why there was no call on that play. It was kind of a play where both of them were going for the puck. But after Rodriguez gets taken down, guess what everybody does? They look at Rodriguez and how he's going to respond because, oh my goodness, he just got taken down into the boards. Is he okay? Okay, thank goodness he's back up there on his feet. And oh my goodness, he just shoved his stick right into Lindgren's face and now the Penguins are down shorthanded. Mika Zibanejad wins the draw. It goes back over to Fox, who finds Strom. Strom into the middle for Zibanejad, who one times that it's his first goal of the playoffs. And my goodness, NHL.com, I hope you're correct in your assessment, because what a way to get your first few goals in the postseason with this performance over here. Because you give it a few more minutes, and Mika Zibanejad ends up getting another Really nice opportunity. It's Adam Fox who sets him up. He's near the left side point this time. He one-times it on goal and it gets right by Louis Domingue. Mika Zibanejad with two goals in about a minute and all of a sudden the game is tied. Give it a few more minutes and the Rangers start to get their mojo on. Mika Zibanejad gets a breakaway after killing off a 5-on-3. Yeah, the Rangers had a 5-on-3 PK situation that they actually handled pretty well. The Penguins could not capitalize. Evgeny Malkin made a few very strange decisions, playing the puck into the corner, centering it for nobody. It was very odd to watch, if I do say so myself. Eventually, Zibanejad gets the breakaway. He goes off the bar or the crossbar or whatever it was. 
But you give it a few more minutes and the Penguins end up taking yet another penalty. Mike Matheson with a double minor on Frank Vetrano. And the Penguins are trying their best to hang on. They send the puck all the way down to Igor Shashurkin. It's right outside the trapezoid where Shashurkin stops the puck. And he sends a long breakout pass, springing up Mika Zibanejad coming in on goal. He takes the shot. It's saved. And Chris Kreider is right there to pot in the rebound. It's 3-2 New York after the halfway point of the game. Malkin then gets his breakaway goal, and then things are tied up. The third period was filled with a lot of back-and-forth hockey. You could really see the Rangers tightening their sticks a little bit, and it was a lot more fun to watch this New York Rangers team in the third compared to the first few minutes that we saw the Rangers playing in the first period. Eventually, though, it is that long shot from Chris Kreider as they're entering the zone with a minute 30 left that goes off of Louis Domingue's shoulder, I believe. It pops up into the air and goes in behind. It's in. Now, NHL.com lists this goal as Mika Zibanejad's right now. It doesn't really matter because either way, it's a point for Fox, Zibanejad, and Kreider as Fox got the secondary assist. Zibanejad sent it over to Kreider and then Kreider took the shot. Whether or not Zibanejad tipped it or not, who really cares? It's still a Rangers goal, a go-ahead goal, that is, that gives them the lead with one minute and 30 seconds to go against a Pittsburgh team that has just had their way in a few of these games so far. You remember the doom and gloom back when it was 3-1? to one. Sure, the Rangers came away with that really nice win in Game 2, but boy, oh boy, did Igor Shashirkin have himself a redemption tour here in Game 6, making some very crucial saves, big money stops, stopping things up with his shoulder, sending pucks all the way out for break-ins. You saw the crowd chanting his name, Igor, 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 but it didn't really work. It just got the guy riled up even more, and it put him in the zone. Kreider's goal... Okay, no, yeah, it's changed up to Kreider now. NHL.com now lists it as Kreider from Zibanejad and Fox. So there you go. No hat trick here for Zibanejad, unfortunately, but Kreider still gets the go-ahead goal. And then, of course, Andrew Kopp gets the empty net goal with 30 seconds left. Tyler Mott almost scored too, so good on him getting back into the lineup and making an immediate presence. But you know, I'm not making this video just because my bracket is saying that New York is going to beat Pittsburgh in seven. I'm making this video because, man, what a story. I know the Penguins are shorthanded right now, no Crosby, no Raquel, etc., but still... This is a fun series, and aside from Toronto-Tampa, I am having a lot of fun watching these Rangers and Penguins games, even though it does pay my heart to see Igor get treated the way that he has been treated and let in the goals that he has been letting in. But of course, come on, it's like the Rangers' defense needs to step up and help their goalie. My goodness, the goals that Igor allowed here, I mean... You can't blame Igor for a breakaway against Malkin. You can't blame Igor for a pinpoint accurate cross crease with no contesting. You can't blame Igor for a net front scrum where his team is not able to clear. Like, this just happens way too often, and Igor was able to handle it for 50-something games in the regular season. It's just now, with the Penguins trying to make it past the Rangers into the second round, this is a team that is trying to exploit the Rangers' defense as much as they can. And they've been successful at that throughout parts of this series. It's why they had the 3-1 to one lead at one point. But still, Pittsburgh going out there and blowing multi-goal leads in back-to-back -back games. It's making things really interesting and setting up for a fantastic finale on Sunday. We've got four Game 7s over the weekend. How crazy is that, eh? What do they say? It's the first time since 2014 we have three Game 7s on one day on a Saturday or whatever it is. That's going to be tomorrow, of course, Toronto, Tampa, Carolina, Boston, and then Edmonton, LA. And then this game over here, which was a Game 6 victory for New York, which is forcing another Game 7 on the upcoming day after that. So talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about the New York Rangers bouncing back and defeating the Penguins 5-3 here in Game 6 of their seven-game series. We have ourselves one more game on Broadway before things get settled up and completed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Rajasthan 9 And bye. <laughs>